The Education Secretary, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Morning. This morning. So much to talk to you about here, so let's rattle through it, should we? Mm -hmm. When did the government first find out about rack concrete being a problem? Um, in this particular case, uh, towards the end of August, we had been doing surveys where we'd been identifying critical versus non-critical. And what happened over the summer is we had three cases, not in schools, some in schools, some not in schools. And we, I sent structural engineers out to see them. Um, some were in uh, commercial settings and uh, some in ju different jurisdictions. And when they went out to see them, they thought there'd been a failure, but it was in a non-critical setting. So that was new evidence and new information, new over and above what the Institution for Structural Engineers guidance says, and so that was new information. So we decided, and they're, they're still being investigated, so I decided to take a very cautious approach. And I knew it was going to be difficult, because it, you know, obviously for parents, for teachers, this come in so late in August, but that's when we got the evidence that a panel had failed in a, in, a, in a roof that had previously been uh, classified as non-critical or would be classified as non-critical. But Education Secretary, back in 2018, when a primary school roof collapsed, mm -hmm. you must have thought, we need to sort this out. Why not challenge the problem during COVID when the schools were empty anyway? So what happened in 2018 when the school collapsed is we issued a, a warning notice to all the responsible bodies. So the Department for Education isn't strictly responsible for the buildings, the local authorities and the, and the trusts are. So with the Local Government Association, we issued a warning based on that uh, collapse to everybody to say but that they had to manage to their rack. During COVID when the schools were closed? Well, at that point, what we started to do was the responsible bodies were responsible for surveying, for looking at their buildings, etc. We decided to take a different approach because we were not sure that they were doing that. We didn't have any visibility of it at all and we wanted to be extra cautious. So in March last year, we started um, a data collection via a questionnaire to all the responsible bodies. So we identified you all those schools. Been done during COVID when the schools were closed? Well, I don't think the, the guidance, I mean, the guidance was there for the responsible bodies to do it. The Department for Education actually is going beyond what it would usually go. So what happened is in March, 20, in, in March uh, last year, we decided to collect all this data. We identified the schools, just under 15,000, 14,000 odd, that were built in this period. We sent questionnaires, detailed questionnaires for them to fill in. The vast majority filled them in. The vast majority came back without any rack at all. Those that came back with suspected rack, we then employed directly structural engineers. We, took, we went in, we sent them into each one of the schools where there was a suspected rack case. Most of them did not have rack. When they went in, they then, if they identified it, they identified it as critical or non-critical. Okay, so this how is many the 156. Are there? How many are there? That are There's critical? 52 identified today as critical. How many more do you still need to look at? There's 104 that were identified as non-critical. So what non-critical meant? How many more still need to I'll be? I'll get to judged. that. But what the for the 104, they were non-critical. So that meant you just monitored and watched them. That was the situation until these cases over the summer, and particularly the last one towards the end of August when we looked at it, and I wasn't willing to take the risk. It, it, it was just one panel, but it was in a roof that had, reason, that had been assessed as non-critical. How many more schools need to be assessed? So the 104, which are non-critical, will now be classed as critical. They're the ones that were going in and emerged, you know, putting emergency procedures in How place. Many more? So the ones, we've now got uh, more surveys that we've done. So we've got more surveys. So we'll be doing those so over the next the, couple, the of, couple of weeks. Most of the surveys come back with no rack, but we've got more surveys to do. So we've now increased the number of surveyors to eight companies, nationwide companies. So they go, they're going in today, tomorrow. They've been going in over the weekend. So to get all of the ones that are outstanding surveyed, out of that, we will get some critical and some non-critical, if, if, if it's the same as it's been happening so far. Now, to put this into scale, there's 22,500 schools. Doesn't matter if your school's closed. Well, of most of the schools will be open. So the vast majority of Even schools... Even if the work's being done? Yeah, because it's not like the whole building. Usually, there's a portion of a building. Sometimes it could be in a portion of a building that's not 
that critical. So all we know is there's rack there, what do we need to do? Okay. Who's, how are you going to pay for it? Well, we have um, funding for um, these critical repairs. So, again, something that's never done before, but we've chosen to do this time, is we have uh, eight structural uh, surveying firms who go in and do the surveys. We have um, three uh, porter cabin providers, so we've laid up you know, a stock of porter cabins so that people can be prepared quickly to be able to do that if they need temporary accommodation. And uh, we've also um, looked at the propping yes, company. Extra funding. It's coming out of the Department <laughs> for Education. Yes. yes. Budget is going to come yes. from. Yes. So when the Chancellor said over the weekend that he will do everything he can to make sure schools are safe, he's not finding any more money for it. Well, yes. So first thing is this mitigation work. So that's the, the short term. So that's funded by the Department for Education. There's also potentially some revenue costs, which we'll look at uh, on each school, each school basis. Well, then we'll have this third part of it, which is some will need to be rebuilt and some will need to be um, refurbished. So and how much are you ring fencing for it? Well, we don't have those costs yet, so we will have to put together what we think that will be and then that will be part of the, um, the capital allocation that and we'll And how need. many schools will actually have to close while this work's being done and how long will it take? Most of schools will not have to close. So based on what we've done previously, I mean, 22,500 schools, the vast majority of children will be going back today. There will be some where they've got quite extensive um, rack, so they may close so that we can put temporary accommodation in place. Many schools are either looking for alternative accommodation if they're within a multi-academy trust or within a local authority, or moving to another classroom if they've got a spare classroom. If it's across the whole school, then that gets more difficult. So what we're doing right now is we've assigned a caseworker for each one of the schools. We're working with the school to figure out what the mitigation okay. plans are. Um, the vast majority hopefully should be able to, and we want to minimise disruption to children's education. I mean, this was... So this money that you're ring fencing, what would you have used it for otherwise? Well, we would have used it for building and conditions, but to be honest, that's what we are using it for, building and conditions. We have a fund... So it's going to impact on building new schools? No, we all... No, no. We always have two funds. We have capital building fund and we have a uh, maintenance fund. How worried are you about this crumbling concrete exposing asbestos? Well, so asbestos, the health and safety executive, uh, basically have strict guidance. So every school has an asbestos plan. And the asbestos plan was basically is to make sure that the asbestos stays in situ as long as it's covered and well protected. And if it's not, how to deal with that. So that's the, that's the so health and safety. you're not concerned about this crumbling concrete the, impacting the, on asbestos? What we've said to when the surveyors go in, the first thing they'll do is they'll get the asbestos plan. So they'll look and be aware of where the asbestos is when they're doing the surveying. So, you know, they, they are aware of that. And that's why we have those plans in place. Because it's not just rack. There's other maintenance that you have to do on schools, which is a normal part of you know, school building maintenance, but you always need to know where asbestos is because the health and safety executives say it's best kept in situ as long as it's well covered exactly. and not disturbed. Exactly. And my question is, are you worried about the crumbling concrete exposing asbestos? Well, that's why the surveyors have so the asbestos. No, I think there's... I mean, these are building surveyors that will, you know, figure out their way around this. You know, they've got the, the asbestos plan and then they know what to do with RAC. So they'll figure out what the best thing is to do in each of those cases. I read in my son's newspaper this morning that you spent £32 million refurbishing your offices, did you? Oh, um, I don't know, actually. I didn't. <laughs> I haven't done it. It's very nice. Uh, which offices? Uh, your offices, Department of Education. Yeah, they, I know that when I was last in the department, I was on a different floor, and I know they are refurbishing some of them. Um, but uh, but no, I wasn't Best involved use of funds in that. At the moment? Uh, well, I wasn't. I don't know what the. I mean, I guess there's some maintenance requirements that they had on there. I, I wasn't part of that decision, to be honest. But I'll uh, I'll check when I get back. I know that I'm in. Uh, a different floor than, than we used to be in. So uh, I guess they're refurbishing aspects of the building. But of course, every part of the public estate needs to be refurbished and, you know, needs to be kept up to, up to speed. In this case, I think it's really important to say that we have done something that we've never really done before, which is the responsible bodies normally would do this. Though at the moment, is it 32 million quid on offices when schools are crumbling? I don't know what the condition of the offices. We could have been dealing with other issues within the offices, uh, but I will look at it when I get back. OK, talk to me about uh, this uh, attack ad that Labour has put out today saying that the uh, Prime Minister actually doesn't care uh, about uh, kids, their education and what's happening to their schools. Well, I think, I think they're on very tricky ground, actually, Labour, because if you look at 
all the time they were in office, they didn't do anything. And there was a number of times when RAC has been brought up since the 1990s and they did nothing, no surveys, you know, didn't collect any information. In Labour-run Wales, they have not done that either. They've relied on the responsible bodies, which, you know, you, you therefore don't know. You, you haven't got a centralised position of but where the RAC is. But is this what our is. politics should be about? I don't think it should. I don't think it should. And I also think um, when you're running part of the school system in Wales and you haven't done a single survey, so they don't know where any RAC is, I think it's also massively incorrect. Because we have done since 20... Since March 2020, we've been collecting data so that when, when I was in a position towards the end of, of, of last month, and I, you know, I really understand the impacts on school heads and teachers, you know, it's the last thing I wanted to do. But when I was in a position where I got new evidence, I could send a structural engineer up, we could get inside the building, we could look at what had happened, sure. and then I could take a cautious approach. The reason I could do that is because all that work for the surveys and the, and the questionnaires meant that I had a clear picture of where we had rack that was identified yeah. as non-critical. Right, so I could send but them in straight away. You can't give me a figure away. at this stage as to how much it's going to cost. Uh, no, because we'll, we will have to rebuild and refurbish. So the first thing is to get get this get, get the schools open, get the minimise the disruption to education. So that will be temporary accommodation propping. The next part of it, um, and there may be some revenue costs as well. And then the next part of it will be to get a plan to rebuild uh, or, or or partially rebuild if it's only in part of a yeah. part of a. But many building. many millions of pounds. Yes, I would think so, yes, okay. to, to, to rebuild schools. And some of them are already rebuilding, yeah. but there'll be more we will have to rebuild. A busy day ahead for your education, Secretary. I must let you go. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank